Well, hello, tubers. Today I'm going to show you what we're working on. We got our Velcro dog there. Took it to the groomers. Got it all pressure washed and cleaned up. But here's what I'm working on today on the 200X. It's uh, 84 is the year. The master cylinder for the front brake. I thought I'd bring you outside in the good lighting. I wanted to show you how skunky this was down in the bore. Hopefully you can get the shot with sunlight here. But, uh, yeah, it's not real happy. don't quite fit in the bore. I'm gonna go give it a squish in the vise. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, uh, that don't fit real good. So, gee, this is laying there. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? So, let's make something that fits down in the bore. Well, this will give you an idea how skunky everything was, too. That was the washer that the snap ring goes on to hold in. So. Let's make something up here. Yeah, it did enough, I guess. And, uh, I got the wheel cylinder holes, but they're. Mm -hmm. It would be real close if one of them would work, and not only that, on the aluminum versus the steel, they'd probably cut pretty fast, maybe be a little too abrasive. So. Okay, we're gonna make an adapter so it fits in the drill here. And just grab the little tape for a little here. I think we're doing her again here. We'll let her look. I think that's going to be pretty good. That's why I saved these wore out ones for such occasions. Clean them up a little. Yeah, we'll clean off the surface here, get a little skib skib. Okay, now where that snap ring goes in here, we're gonna give that a little bit of scrapey. Make sure that it drops back in there nicely when we're done. And the snap ring don't go right tight to where that different machined depth is. That washer sits in there, so that's what the reason for that little bit of gapage is. But basically, you want to scrape all the schmig mites out. If you don't have the fancy wire wheel dilly bop, get yourself some 600 grit sandpaper. Just fine too. Yeah, and you want to make sure your your passages are clean of leftovers, so things don't fall off and recontaminate your system. And of course, the glove don't fit on that one. So, oh, of course, the cleaner yet. I tell you that. Ah, yeah, the glove don't fit. Well, when you get one of these guys. We'll just use that one. Does that one look good? <laughs> oh, I gotta get ah, Okay. So, give it a little bit of cadaver. Get a little there. And actually cut that right off to use it, but that's just long enough. Yeah. Scrape her around in there. And then you know that opening there is scraped and clear too. You can check them with a flashlight on the final. And you can see if you're good or not. Oh, you got a 
There we go. Put her back. Or something like that. Scrubby. Anyway, next up, let's continue. We got a video on this parts washer. If you're interested in seeing that, good. Okay, well, we gotta get the piston seals off. The hollowed part that always faces to the inside of your unit, so when it builds pressure, it actually makes them little cups tighter on the bore. See all this white skunky on here? Ah, there we go. That's like when you got aluminum wheel on your car and you leak air, well, you got, you got to have two sealing surfaces here, like an L around there. And all this stuff here has to be cleaned off. We're reusing that piston. Less talky, more do. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. So I'm going to just jump down there and we'll give it a spin and Two twenty sandpaper is what I'm using here. I think we're going to call that a call that a day. Just enough to get him over the edge. This should work out there. There, we're golden, okay. And now we'll do the easy one. I always gotta do the hard one first, you know how that goes. This one I think we can probably pop on without any other assistance. and the fingers tough. There we go. Look at that. Holy cow. Damn, do I got a case of shakes. I should probably eat some before I started on this. Alright, we're back. For you folks to see. Well, okay, we're started in the bore, we're stuffing them. There we go. him to press that in here. Sorry to bore you to death, but folks only like enjoy this stuff, so yeah, now you get to see. Continuing on, one thing I didn't show you folks is these rubber cups where I press them onto the piston. I take them more of them, I stole them and I heat them up a little bit. That way they're more pliable. I should make sure to Point that out. Now, we'll put the reservoir on, but what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to put a light coat of 
this uh, uh, synthetic brake grease. This helps keep the electrolysis down or whatever the heck you want to call it so water gets underneath here when you wash it or plain in mud that way that don't start to corrode so fast so put a light coat of that on there off my pinkies just a light coat of brake fluid on this part right here you gotta make sure you line up the dot or better known line up the dot you got your little dot right there it's got to go to this end here so, like so come on to there Looks to be adequate now. So it's pretty much so. Oh, I did put a little bit of synthetic grease here underneath the piston where the boot sits here too. That way, water and moisture won't start working its way down. I should have did that before I put this all together, but I wanted to point that out too. See, I forgot to show you that. seal for the cap, whatever you want to call it. Uh, like I said, if you clean that off with uh, some kind of cleaner, make sure you dry it right away just to make sure it don't get expanded. You tuck him all back in real pretty like that. You don't got to worry about trashing anything. Here's a tip too, if you're working on wheel cylinders on your car or this kind of stuff, I got to show you this one too. You should always have some of the synthetic brake grease. It's very beneficial. Here's something I've been doing for years and it's evident how good it works. Now here's a example that I wanted to show you folks. See all the skunk in there on that guy? Well, before you put the boot on or on a wheel cylinder, them end rubber, Steely bops. Put a coat of that stuff on, work it around so it's fully encircled on the edge of that so the water and salt and crap can't creep in up behind causing that problem. And then also do where the shaft comes through. Do that part of it too. And you would be amazed how much longer stuff lasts. And uh, also brick fluid flushes. It's not a bad idea on stuff. You ain't got to overkill it, but once in a great, great, great while, not a bad idea. You can see in there too the damage where you get moisture in the system and it gets in past the boot. This would be another area to seal here if you were to rebuild this. So by it's such a simple sounding thing, but I found it makes such a big difference. I just had to pass that information along too. It's neat when you get your money's worth out of stuff. That's why I do these videos, to try to save you people money, make a few friends along the way, ain't a bad thing either. Right, pop this guy on. And just remember, you gotta put up, up. Why? Because you can. And it's always kind of nice with see things going together, but the, the cleanup is always seems to take way longer than any of the work on so much. Okay, on the banjo fitting, too, I actually cleaned and blew him out, so in case there's any schmig bites that are floating around, you don't want them getting back in the system. Then when you're working on foreign, you always notice, too, the wrenches, usually it's all even numbers, pretty much so. A little something that you're going to want to warm with that thought. Yeah, a little tricky for you. Now, also, I got the handle cleaned up here, so put a little bit of synthetic grease on pivots on this stuff. Woohoo! Woo! 
do the pivot points, yada. Well, with the cap on, guard on, you can't fill the reservoir. So what we're gonna do is set this together for the time being here. Get the system let out and put the cover on. These skill twist things, man, I really like these. And uh, they're kind of a thing in the past. I'm running out of batteries. I'm gonna see if I can cut one of these open, make something. Uh, <laughs> phone these at my mother's house the other day. Uh, oh, okay, she didn't want them anymore. But what's cool for dashboard work and stuff, you dial this clutch way down and uh, it slips instead of wrecking, screws in the dashboard, stripping stuff. So I don't know. Have you ever had any experiences with them? I like them things. So let's get this filled. Get it bled out. You know, big deal here. Hopefully we do not leak. That does help. There, it should be a wrap. Button her up. Then for the screws, so they don't get all skunky again, I actually put a light coat of that synthetic grease on them. screws I don't think they wanted that cover to come off. Okay. I want my ride. That's always my favorite saying. We'll be working on the goal carts years ago when we were kids and it was like, hurry up, I want my ride. Actually, I do. <laughs> then, once you think they're all done, got everything all back together, always check for leaks. So, apply some real good pressure to your brake system. And what you do, other than just looking, you go around with your hand, check for any residue. Uh oh, my water bottle tipped over. Dang, we're good. <laughs> anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video, tubers. Get you back here again, I hope. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>